So our next slide that we want to talk about is our protocol and guidelines. This document was out there since DRA has been out there, um, but we wanted to revamp it to make it more MRC because obviously DRA is done, we have MRC now. This document is based upon the, those communication tools that county boards and providers need to establish and to continue to establish to make MRC successful. Who should be following the protocol and guidelines? County boards, current SSAs, and any new SSAs. Providers, your current providers, and new providers. The protocol and guideline document should be kept as training to remind county boards and providers to continue to do work together. Mutual trust and respect must exist to make MRC successful. County boards, COGS, and providers should be working collaboratively when developing services and supports for individuals. The ISP is to be used for county boards and providers to complete a CPT that projects the individual's cost for a 12-month waiver span. MRC requires county boards and providers to continue to work and develop effective communication strategies and share in the responsibilities of the work. Anytime there are changes, revisions to a CPT, communication must have occurred prior to the change. You will hear us talk about several times this whole training about how a communication should be now. Effective communication starts now. Changes, when changes occur, those should be communicated now. Some of those future MSS enhancements that we are planning to enable is to help with communications within the system. So what we're looking to do is to be able to provide a provider's email and a county board's email. So when a county board decides to change schedules or anything in MRC, when that change occurs, an email will be sent to that provider. That provider will be basically told through the email that a change has occurred. Go look at your change, make sure that is what was communicated, and if you like the change, then we go forward. Providers, the same side on yours. So most providers should have access to MSS to be able to help those scheduled services in creating a calendar. So when you go in there and you create a calendar and create those service patterns, then an email will go to the county board. The county board will know that a change has been made, and then everybody can review those changes and push through finalization and authorization. So providers, if I were you, I would bring this document to the meeting and make sure that you use this as a way to go through the process to make sure that it is successful. So we laid this out in that type of an order. We started talking about collaboration and why it is so important for providers and county boards to develop respectful relationships, to communicate effectively and on an ongoing basis, and how to do that through the use of CPT. The next section is preparation and information gathering. It is critical that people come to ISP meetings prepared to have the ISP meeting. What I mean by that is you must have with you information about services that the individual has utilized in the past and will likely utilize in the future. We'll talk about that more specifically later on in the training, but it is important to come prepared. We then talk about the homemaker personal care calendar and what services should go into each one of the schedules to be put on the calendar. I will tell you that we have learned through the MRC process that uh, there are CPTs out there for sites that where people share services where all of the services are in unscheduled time. So we are telling you that that's probably not appropriate. You should be using scheduled time for those services that you can reasonably predict, and you should be using unscheduled portion of CPT to put in services that you know are going to occur, but you don't know necessarily know what day they're going to occur on. Because MRC is by the month, we will talk more specifically later on in the training about what information you will need to gather and how you will need to organize it so that when you come to the meeting it ends up in CPT correctly. You will see under the unscheduled services uh, section we gave you an examples um, to consider. Staff time spent managing consumer finances, staff time spent on scheduling appointments, time spent on grocery or supply shopping, 
cleaning or laundry, staff time spent on pickup and delivery of medications, and staff time spent picking up individuals if it's not already in the staffing pattern. So as you're going through this, use this as a resource to make sure that you are gathering all the information that will be necessary when you go to the meeting. Jessica started to talk about how we are changing CPT to become more of a communication tool for providers and county boards to use simultaneously. Jessica, uh, could you expand a little bit further on, um, you talked about how there will be emails that will go out when changes are made. Can you talk a little bit more about what we envision the future to look like in CPT? Yep. So we have an MRC work group that meets monthly. And through this work group, we've started talking about enhancements, one, to MRC, but also to MSS as a whole. Because in order to make MRC just as successful as we want it, we also have to make MSS successful. And to do that, there are some enhancements that need to be made. So as we go through this training, you'll hear us talk about some of those enhancements that we're looking to make. The biggest one is this communication. So what we're looking to do first off is where we can bring in a provider email. So we know in PSM, we already have agency emails, provider emails, contact emails. There's an assortment of different emails that live in PSM. We're going to use one of those emails, and we've deemed it that agency email because at this time it's not really being utilized for any other communication flows. And we're going to end up trying to pull that into our where you assign that DBU provider. When you assign the DBU provider, that email address is going to come through, and this MSS is going to store that. We're going to be able to use MSS then at that time to say, hey, when a change gets made that affects this MRC area, email this provider to say a change has been made, go review CPT. The county board side of things is going to take some time to get to. That side is where the most complication gets in because there are several county boards and not just one specific county board person that lives within PSM. So the county board side, we're going to take some time and make sure we do it right and get it in there. And we're going to try to develop a notification platform to where the county boards have the power to say, these notifications are going to go to this person. And at any time that changes, then they can update it and change it. Providers, you will have the same access on your PSM side. If something changes because you put Jessica's email in and Jessica decides to retire and Gary comes in, then you can go into PSM and change it to Gary's email. County boards, we're looking to do the same thing. These enhancements will help ensure that communication, if it can't happen right away through an email or a phone call between county board provider, the system is helping support that. Also, providers who have been adequately trained and have requested access shall be given access in MSS by the county boards. Remember, one of the things we want to do for this is to make sure providers, and Gary will go into this a little bit more, that providers need to understand what MSS is. And in order to do that, we need to go through some training. One of the future enhancements that we want to work on is a training, comprehensive training, that will allow for MSS and MRC training to go through county boards providers to go through. And at the end of this, as a provider, you will take a comprehensive test. If you pass that comprehensive test, you will be given that read edit access into MSS. That will allow you to go in, make sure you can build those schedules, those unschedules, and those calendar pieces. County boards and providers, you are to ensure that when onboarding new staff that will be handling MSS, that they have been adequately trained as well. This training that we develop along with our training and communications team is going to help some of that understanding. Obviously, there's always going to need to be continued training. And if you sign up for our DODD's Memo Mondays, as things develop and things change, that is how we communicate a lot out of our systems changing or webinars or live chats based upon changes we've made or going out. So, Jessica, the, the training is going to come out, obviously, between now and then. I believe there is a list of current trainers that the department has that was developed years ago when we, when, when we first developed DRA. Will that be available on the department's website? We're, we're, we're looking to try to get it available either through the county boards and, or out to OACB, and posting it on the, the website will actually differ because it'll change and people will fall off and then keeping that updated. So what we're going to try to do is get it out to the county boards so that they know, get it out to OACB and OPERA to see if they can send it out to some of their folks. That way it gets out that change because leaving it on our website with the changes and people falling off it because obviously it's changed so much since 2010 to now that we don't want to continue to make sure that stays updated and somebody reach out and then miss that communication. So, 
So I'm going to talk about edit access a little bit more. Um, we got a number of questions during our training seminars that we, that we did across the state. One of the concerns is, is that you know, a provider gets edit access, exactly what does that mean? We are working with the IT folks at DODD to try and work through all those issues. The way that we have talked about it to this point is when a provider has been granted edit access because they have been adequately trained, that does not mean that you can go into any of your CPT sites at any given moment and make changes. We are still proposing that the current system, which the county board checks the box for the provider to be able to have added access for a limited time period, would still be in use because it's frankly not a good idea for people to be able to go in and out of CPT anytime they want to and make changes because it is a live-based right. application. Everything that you do happens right now. So what we are envisioning at this point, we haven't met with the IT people yet, but currently there are only two ways that a provider can put things in CPT once they've been granted edit access. One is, is they can create a version. Also, county boards can create a version. The problem with versioning today is that once a version has been created and saved, it cannot be edited by anyone. So that's not very user friendly. So if we're going to use CPT as a way to work through things, then we need to be able to have versions out there where you both sides could propose changes. The other way is to have edit access through the current version or the live version of CPT, which I am recommending is dangerous. And the reason why it's dangerous is because there are all sorts of things that you can currently do in CPT that, that wouldn't necessarily be good. You can right now go in and edit a current staffing schedule that is on the calendar, has already been authorized, already been finalized, and you could go in and edit it and change it. The problem with that is that if it gets saved and it gets finalized and authorized, we now have two versions of the same schedule out there and unless something has changed, CPT will haphazardly pick one when you open it up. Obviously, that's not good. There are a number of other things that you shouldn't be able to do in a live version. You can take that schedule, you can apply it to a calendar. It could never get finalized or authorized. And the next time you open CPT up, voila, you would be looking at those proposed schedules but those wouldn't be the active ones. So there, there are a number of things that we're gonna talk to IT about in, in making CPT a little bit more user-friendly so that we can actually use it as a communication tool with providers and county boards at the same time. What we are asking for at this point is to create what I have called a playground. And that would be a version that would be accessible by both providers and county boards um, at the same time to be able to work through issues. We are also asking that both can be in CPT simultaneously. Only one could have edit access and the other read access because you don't want people tripping over each other when, when you're putting things into CPT. But you could actually even be on the telephone, both pull up a CPT site and walk through the issues and both be able to see it at the same time. The other enhancements that we're looking at in CPT is to archive information that has been in the CPT site since the beginning of time. Uh, that would be every individual who has ever lived there still shows up on the home screen. Every provider who has ever been a provider still shows up on the home screen. Every staffing schedule that's ever been created, and we've gone into some sites and there's literally hundreds, archiving that information, putting it in a data lake, in other words, drain the swamp, 
which will actually probably improve some of the speed issues that we have had with MRC because it is a live-based application. Every time you open it, it loads all of that information whether you need it or not. So that kind of gives you an overview of the things that we're thinking about in CPT to make it a tool that both parties can be using at the same time to have the conversation so that there are no misunderstandings. The next thing we're going to do is kind of walk through the DODD website. So obviously when you log on to our website, dodd.ohio.gov, you're going to go to DODD forms and rules. All of our rules are listed there. And you'll go down, scroll down to 5123-2931, and that is the current DBU rule. Also, the online security affidavit request. At this time, the way the system works, if you want read access to MSS, you need to request it through our online security request. As soon as you click on DUDD forms and rules, the online security request is right there. Fill that out. Email that it request that you turn it into so that you can get read access to MSS. Providers. It was amazing how many providers at our trainings, when we asked the question, do you have read access to CPT, it was amazing how many people did not raise their hands. It is critical that you are able to see how services are authorized. It is critical for you to be able to do that so that you can envision the information that you need to bring to meetings. I don't know how you can do it without that, frankly. In doing your part, you need to become familiar with the tool. You need to become familiar with the process. You need to understand what county boards also do in CPT so that there are no misunderstandings. And you need to be able to envision how the information flows through CPT and what information you need to bring to be able to make corrections when they're necessary. Also on our website is a, um, a platform where we house all of our MSS stuff. So once you're on DODD.ohio.gov, you're going to go to what is DODD about us. You're going to select it. Then once you select it, you're going to go down to DODD apps on the left-hand side. And then you're going to find MSS. Once you're landed on the MSS information page, you will notice that it just gives you a brief overhaul of MSS, what it is. And then as you scroll down, you will see resources. So there'll be resources there on how to build some MSS sites. Also, on the right-hand side, you will see learn more about the MRC calculator. You will be able to click on that, and that is our current RISE program. So this pro RISE program will give you all the details of how MRC was established, kind of what the build basis of what MRC stood for behind it, and then it'll go through what we're going through today. How do you put in your actuals? How do you build a schedule? How do you build an unschedule? What does the collaboration mean? What is that protocol and guidelines? So this will be where you can learn all that. Also on the right-hand side, you will see attachment where exercises one through five are. You will then click the download button. At that time, it'll download you a zip file. It'll have five different exercises in there. It'll show you and walk you through how to build MSS sites. For me, MSS was fairly new because if you all know, we have a great team behind MSS where a lot of people deal with Rick or Brian. So MSS for me was something I didn't have to learn. I just kind of went, yeah, I may know, but you know what, let me grab Rick or Brian and because they are our MSS experts. When MRC was established, I was kind of put on that project to say, hey, you need to learn this and you need to help with this. So I took a couple hours out of my day is about what it took. And I went to this piece of our, our webpage and went through all these exercises and learned how to utilize MSS, learned how to build sites. It took me about two hours to go through all the exercises that are on here, and I'm still no expert, but I have a very strong foundation of how to read MSS, how to put in schedules and unscheduled services in MSS, all those great tools that you need to know to make working with county boards and providers in MSS successful.